Kevin Kenny, the Build Series live in New York. The woos, the cheers, they're well deserved. We have a music legend in the house today, a nine time Grammy Award winner whose new album, Behind This Guitar, is out and available everywhere January 31st. Please give it up for Jose Feliciano. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I would say welcome, Jose, but it feels silly to say welcome to somebody that really got their start in many ways, about 10 minutes from where we are right now on 4th and Broadway over in the Greenwich Village. Well, um, Greenwich Village will always be um, a very important place in my life because um, that's where I started. And uh, I think, uh, or I wish that some of the young musicians of today had a place like Greenwich Village to hone their skills. Uh, and you know, if you, if you can make it in New York, then you can make it anywhere. And that's so true. It isn't just a song. Because I worked really hard as a kid. I practice my guitar for long periods of time. I'd get out of school, and instead of doing homework, I'd be practicing the guitar. Because uh, at one time in my life, I wanted to be like Andre Segovia. And then I realized, well, there's only one Andre Segovia. You have to be Jose Feliciano. And I chose to be me in the sense that I played everything. I mean, that I played different types of music. Was that a lesson that you were able to teach yourself, Jose? That there was only you know one of you and you had to be that? Or was that something that maybe a mentor or a close personal friend well, helped I you with? Think, I think uh, that God played an important part in my decision. Uh, God was the force. You know, I don't know what other people call it. I know this young generation <clears throat> is a little bit godless. They don't know that there's a greater force than us pushing us to do things. And that was my belief, and it's still very strong today. You talk about that greater force, and I, you, are, as an artist, just someone that has always... I feel, been able to tap into the specialness of life, if you will, and the, the energy that is really all around us and always prevalent if we, if we decide to tap into it. When you revisit a place like New York and you're so close to your origin in so many ways, are you able, even this many years later, to still feel the specialness, to still feel that energy? Most definitely. Um, when I come into New York City, there's um, a sense of gratitude with me. Gratitude for the people who are helping me to get now where I should have been a few years ago. <laughs> and and um, I'm very lucky. I thank them. I love them. Uh, I like to. She doesn't like being mentioned, but I'm going to mention her anyway. I want to thank my dear friend, Helen Murphy, who, who heads the label I'm with. And I feel great. I really, I have every reason on earth to feel good. Yeah, it's, it's very, very, very well deserved. And you have a fantastic team that you brought with you here today uh, around you to support the cause and, uh, and the new record that's out. And you're, you reunited with Rick Gerard, who is a, 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 a collaborator. I did. Yes. I did. Rick was the guy that forced me to record the chain. It isn't that I had to be forced because I didn't like the song. Uh, I just didn't know what avenue we were going to go with. And when the track was done, I said, OK. I said the same thing with uh, Light My Fire when he chose that. And um, we were just lucky. And I think it does take luck uh, in anything you do, whether it's music or whether it's uh, like I have three wonderful children. I have a great 
wife, and uh, I've been blessed in so many ways. When you take a, a song like The Chain, and that is originally uh, a three-part vocal performance, and you condense it down to just your vocal, how challenging is that? What's the creative process like? Well, I have to say, um, uh, Tim, that it's... Uh, Ken, I'm sorry. Uh, that it it is challenging because you have to put it in a different context. Now, I happen to like Fleetwood Mac. I happen to like <clears throat> the guitar work of Lindsay Buckingham. And I thought to myself, well, let me do it, do this. And I hope that Fleetwood Mac will hear my version and enjoy it. I saw many things when I did my version. I put the guitar in a flamenco context. And, um, and so that's what I did. And in my mind, I could see uh, the portrait of, um, I think it was Salvador Dali, but I could be wrong. Um, but it was an interesting thing I saw in my mind. You know, um, General Franco, when someone didn't agree with his way of thinking, he was like uh, Joseph Stalin. That was the end of you. And um, I saw these images in my mind, and I drew from that. Do images uh, that you're able to conjure while, while, while writing a song, is that a, is that a big um, source of inspiration typically when you're making music, imagery? Well, with, with me it is. I mean, I see, I see the reason and the wherefore to write something. Like, um, I've written quite a few songs. I remember I did an album called Fantastic Feliciano and when I was doing that album at the time, uh, I couldn't get in to see Bob Dylan, wherever he was. It was after a concert of his. Then we went to wherever he lived, and he was having a party, and we talked. And I, was, uh, and I am a great admirer of, Do of Bob Dylan. I always felt like this man was way above my intelligence at the time, because I wasn't into poetry. And in school, I lollygagged a lot, because I, I wasn't interested in anything but music. And yet, I got a great education in New York. Let me know if I'm talking too much. No. <laughs> I, I got a great education in New York from the public school system. And that's when the public school system was worth its weight and gold. And I think that uh, that's something that I hope Donald Trump addresses. Because the only way America can stay great is by its kids getting a good education. Yeah. When you think about uh, Bob and, and those early days in New York and just, uh, just I guess, the scene, for lack of a better uh, term, of the Greenwich Village in those days, it, what, is it more uh, the competition? Was it a competition back then? Was it a community? What was the overall um, vibe? I think it was very communal. Like, for example, I loved artists like Judy Collins. I loved uh, artists like Stephen Bishop. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, I just felt that all the folk musicians were doing what John Lennon said we should, said we should do. And I feel this today too. All we need is love and we can move mountains. Yeah. Is that, is that the highest achievement in your eyes as an artist is to spread love and to inspire through your music? Well, if it wasn't at one time, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I do believe in loving your neighbors, even 
even if the neighbors are a bit a pain in the ass, let's say. <laughs> you love them anyway. Right. And, um, you know, that's one thing I have to say. Without getting religious here, that's, that's one thing that Jesus had together in his mind. He wanted people to love each other. And um, the people who were in power and had money didn't want to bother with, let's say, the person that wasn't rich and didn't have any money. And this, I believe, angered the Lord, and rightly so. And um, I'm not perfect. I don't want to be perfect because only God is perfect. perfect. And so I don't want to take that away from its rightful owner. I want to, you know, I'll be me, and hopefully someone along the way will say, you know, Jose Feliciano tried to do what was right, and uh, and that's all I want to do. It's quite the legacy, too. It's beautiful, Jose. Um, You've had such an incredible uh, career from a longevity standpoint, but also just uh, you've done so many groundbreaking things. And one of them I wanted to ask you about is uh, way back in 1968, when you were the first person to ever uh, cover, or really modernize, or, or interpret the uh, Star Spangled Banner, which is pro I've heard was very controversial at the time. It's something that plenty of people do nowadays. But what was it like at the time? Was there a backlash at the time? Where, how did that whole well, thing come about? You know, I did it at the fifth game of the World Series. And uh, I remember that uh, Tony Kubek came, uh, came back to me in the dugout and he said, you know, you've, you've really caused quite a stir here. Veterans are throwing their shoes at the TV and they're saying you should be deported and all. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, how can you deport someone that's from here, you know? Um, but, but, you know, I've gotten over it. I mean, uh, as soon as that happened, my records went off the radio, and I was climbing on the charts with high heel sneakers. And I did a version that was killer. I mean, it was killer. I had... Ray Brown on bass, whom to me was the god of bass players, and he still is. Um, I, for example, I just did a cover of a Beatles song. I did a version of Michelle. And in the beginning of Michelle, I, I did some voices in the intro, and then I played upright bass on it. And I played in the style of Ray Brown to do him homage because he was the best as far as I'm concerned. I know there's Ron Carter. I know there was Charles Mingus and all these great bass players. But in, and Jacko, and Jocko Pastorius. But in my mind, they all had to take their hats off to Ray Brown because he was the king, as far as I'm concerned. What's the latest on uh, this documentary that's in the works, Jose? Well, um, I hear, I haven't, you know, seen the documentary. Now, you all may laugh at me that, that I would <laughs> approach it that way, but I've seen some parts of it, and I think it's a great documentary. And... Um, if you have any questions about it, you can ask uh, my friend Helen Murphy, and she could probably fill you in a little more than I could. Awesome. Well, we look forward to that uh, as well, and we're going to get to some audience questions right now. The first is going to come from uh, uh, right behind me in the front row. Hi. Hi, uh, Mr. Jose Feliciano. It's, it's a pleasure for me is, uh, to, to meet you. Stay here. Thank you so much. Thanks, God, for this beautiful opportunity. Um, since I was a child, my father taught me, love your music, love your songs, love everything. There was a many songs rise, listen to your music. It was a, a great experience. I come from Valledupar, Colombia. It's a little town sure. in, in Colombia. Have you heard about the Vallenaro music? 
Bayonato music, of course. Yes, uh, I would I like to know. I to listen to uh, Bovea y sus Bayonatos. Perfecto, perfect. Yeah. So yes, great. I'm very familiar with it. Excellent. And, and I would like to know if you, if you have you ever uh, tried to make a record in Bayonato, some music, La Gota Fria, for example. Well, I, I haven't, but um, I love the music. Uh, my uncle used to have a phonograph, and he would buy 78s. And he would play them in his house, and I would listen, and I love the music. I think it's happy in spots, and it's sad in others. I used to listen to songs that went, Ay, se muere mi alma, si mi amor se va del valle. Y mi único consuelo son las caricias de mi madre, porque el amor de una madre es el amor verdadero. That was one of my favorite songs. I appreciate it so much. It was an uh, no, awesome. My father is Adalberto Padilla. He lives in Colombia. He's in love. He loves the way you're singing this beautiful song. Thank you so much. Okay, Ta thank you. Thanks Say God. hello God. to him for me. God bless you. You too. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's get to another fan question uh, from over here. Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Jorge Mancilla, and also it's an honor, uh, Mr. Feliciano, okay. to uh, be in your presence. Um, I'm originally from uh, New York, but my parents are from Peru. And uh, my question is, who are your, well, top three favorite guitarists? That's my curiosity, my question for you. Well, uh, Latin artists that I used to listen to when I came to New York in 1950 from Puerto Rico. I used to listen to Celia Cruz. I used to listen to Tito Rodriguez. Uh, I used to listen to um, uh, a Puerto Rican trio that was very famous then, uh, El Trio San Juan. And I used to listen to El Trio Los Panchos. And that was interesting. Their music was good. Excellent. Great question. Uh, let's get to the next question. What's your name? Um, I'm very happy to be here. I'm so happy that I, I don't know what to say anymore. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm from Peru. And I follow you since from the late 60s up to today. And well, I love Peru, let me tell you. Um, I love ceviche. Oof. I like, uh, I also like chicha mora. Ay, mama. <laughs> and uh, I love anticuchos. Ooh. So I love all the good things from Peru. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. And my question is, uh, what your favorite song to perform? My favorite song to perform? Any song that the listeners will listen to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Jose, is there a song off the new album that's coming out on Friday that uh, you're particularly maybe looking forward to in the future to perform live? Yes. Well, this uh, uh, there is a song. It's called Behind This Guitar. This is the title track. Yes. And this song uh, has tells my story. I never knew the writers who wrote it. It was written by three fellows. And... Um, it really told my story. I mean, everything it said in the song, that was me. So uh, Rick Gerard had, had found the song years ago, waiting for me to come around to record it. And I got the opportunity, thanks to Helen, to record it. And um, hopefully, with everybody's help out there, we'll have a hit. I also recorded... Um, the Chain uh, by Fleetwood Mac. And uh, I'm very proud of the version that I did, though I had to be talked into it. But um, it's like anything in life. You know, when you're not familiar, or even if you are familiar, you know, you like when I heard the song, I said, well, how can I do it um, kind of like 
Fleetwood Mac, but not like Fleetwood Mac. And the version came to me. We look forward to hearing it, uh, the album in full. Let's get to one final fan question here in New York. I actually grew up in Greenwich Village, so I'm very familiar with your career. And my question is, my name is Andrew. What, is the, or what was the most challenging moment of your career spanning, say, the past uh, six plus decades? Well, I think the most challenging moment in my life, forget the career, was society. Because society uh, had the problems about blindness that I didn't have. They were always telling me what I couldn't do rather than what I could do. And I thought to myself, hey, I know what I can do. I know uh, I'm not mentally challenged. And, and I, have, I have my life together. Just go with the force that is pushing you and you won't go wrong. Awesome. We should, Andrew, you said you grew up in uh, Greenwich Village? Yes. What was that, Jose, you were asking me about a, a restaurant back in the day you guys all used to eat at. What there was that used to be a sandwich shop in the village called Rienzi's. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I yes. That. Yeah, famous place? Really good, really, really good. I miss it. That's awesome. Right Is on. it still there? Not as far as I know, no. no. Now it's, everything is subways now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, well, unfortunately, Jose, we are, we are out of time. I do want to mention one uh, cool thing. If you're watching us on the West Coast, um, I hope tickets are still available, uh, if at all, for this. But you're doing a very cool, uh, very rare, intimate question and answer at the Grammy Museum on February 11th, I understand. I do. And uh, I just want to tell people that I have a website which is josefeliciano.com, I believe. Is that right, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, josefeliciano.com. And you can get in touch with me. And unlike maybe, I don't know, uh, some people, we do answer our mail because without the fans, where the hell would we be? So I just want to say with the little time I have left, that I owe all of you, even all of the people that are in this audience, I owe, I owe you my life, and I'm grateful. Thank you for giving me a career. Jose, thank you so much for coming by. And don't forget, the new album out everywhere January 31st, Behind This Guitar. Jose Feliciano, everybody. All right.